Hi, and thanks for joining us for one of Family Marines videos. My name's Tom, and uh, today we're here on our showroom, our back showroom. And just so you know, we have uh, as many as 25 pontoons inside. Because, of course, we're in Minnesota, you know. Uh, there's some cold temperatures around here, and we got to have a nice warm show floor for you to view our boats. Um, today we're going to talk about a Barletta pontoon. So this is a model that's called a Cabrio. So the lineup in Barletta goes Aria, Cabrio, Corsa, and Lusso. Lusso is being their top shelf. So the Cabrio has been a very, very popular model for us. Uh, today we're going to talk about a, a, a boat called a 22 QC. So the 22 means it's 22 feet long. The Q represents a quad lounge and the C represents the co-pilot's chair. So when we get inside the boat, I'll show you what that seating arrangement is all about. So for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the outside. I'll show you all the features that this boat has, and then we'll go to the inside and we'll show you all those features, and then we'll talk about some pricing. So to begin with, um, as I mentioned, this is a 22-foot pontoon. Now, not all lengths of pontoons are created equal. Let me give you an example. Barletta calls this a 22 because they measure the tube length. So from the tip of the tube to the back of the pontoon is 22 feet. Yet the deck extends a foot, a little over a foot beyond that. So the deck length on this boat is a little over 23 feet. Now in retrospect, some companies measure in the length of the, of the transom where the motor mounts. So uh, there's a boat out that we know of that's out there that calls it a 22-foot boat. Its length overall from the back of the transom to the front of the pontoon is 22 feet. Yet the deck length is 20 feet 2 inches. Well, golly, that's kind of hard to tell, call that a 22-foot pontoon, but they do. So they, we, we're giving you 3 feet of deck in this boat versus some other brands that are out there. So that's something as you're out shopping, you want to look at deck length, deck length of course, is very, very important because you get more boat that way. So um, starting out with the tubes, uh, Barletta uses a 25 inch diameter tube and the keel is a solid keel. Now the keel is this V channel right here and it runs all the way to the back of the pontoon and it's solid aluminum versus some other keels that are out there are you know v and they're open in the middle why do we use a solid keel well number one it's stronger solid is is much stronger but more importantly we do it because of zebra muscle what happens with the open v keel is that zebra muscles will get up in there and then if you're moving your boat from different lakes to different lakes you can transfer uh invasive species zebra muscle to different lakes even though you've cleaned the entire outside of the pontoons, um, they can still get up in there and they're nearly impossible to get out. So we don't want transference of zebra mussel. So like I said, 25 inch diameter pontoon that gives us a 10 person capacity because of the diameter. If they were 23 inch, we'd bound to be down to nine, in, uh, nine people. Um, heavy duty splash fins. These are extruded aluminum splash fins. A lot of companies that are on the market are using sheet metal, and you can't do that with a sheet metal splash fin. The reason that we make such a heavy duty splash fin is A, when you bang it into the dock, it's not all getting beat up and sharp edges. And we don't want our kids swimming around sheet metal splash fins that have sharp edges on them. That's a safety feature. Number two, we have seen pontoons come into our service department with sheet metal splash fins. And let's say you have too much weight, too many people sitting up in the front of a pontoon, and you hit a big wave and the boat does a nose dive, right? You probably might have had that happen. And what happens is often those sheet metal splash fins will bend right up out of the way. That's not what they're designed to do. So uh, not only are we reducing the, 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 the splash from the waves that we're hitting, these are put on at an angle onto the nose cone so that if you did have too much weight in the front and you did do that nose dive, these are put on an angle to help bring the bow of the pontoon back up on the water, top of the water, quicker. 
So, heavy duty splash fins. Full length skirting, okay? That's this sheet metal down here. Um, that also is an extruded piece of aluminum. Now, you'll notice that this boat is matte black and matte blue. There's seven different colors available. Um, matte black, um, black diamond, which is a glossy black. There's two different blues. There's matte blue and there's a regular blue. Um, there's burgundy, there's champagne, there's um, uh, 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 white. Did I miss any? What? Gray. gray. Forgot about gray. Yeah. Okay. Now, a cabrio is standard with a monotone, meaning one t color on the outside. The option is to upgrade to the two tone. And you can reverse these two colors at no extra charge any way you want. Okay? So you can uh, uh, design a pontoon on the outside that many, many, many different color combinations. Now, the other thing that we've done on this pontoon is we've added what's called a blackout package. Now, normally, the uh, aluminum rails that you'll see are very similar to this. The standard run-of-the-mill anodized aluminum rails. When we add the blackout package, the rails are black anodized, the rub rail, the skirting, and the bimini top frame are all black anodized. Very attractive appearance. We bring in, golly, 99% of our barlettas with the blackout package because we just think it enhances the appearance of the pontoon so much, it really makes a difference of the appearance. It's just gorgeous, we think. Now, moving on. Stainless steel corner castings, heavy duty stainless steel corner castings. Some companies use aluminum, and of course this is the first thing you're gonna bang into the dock, and a stainless steel is much, much stronger than what aluminum would be. Um, we have pop-up stainless steel cleats. We have LED docking lights. We have LED navigation lights. And these are kind of nice. These are boat bumper removable clips. So there's a little square button on here, you push it forward and that thing will pop right out. Now you tie your boat bumper on here, you know, the white thing that you hang on the side. So it's easily installed and removed from the boat. So there's four of these, two up front, two in the back. So you can easily pop this right out of there. Man, that's just a breeze. I love that. Moving to the gates. I want to show you something on the gates. This has what we call doggy dock view. Now you can see the front gate and the side gate is the same thing. It has this mesh material on the top and the bottom. And you can see my hand right through there. So that's where the pets you can look through as you're cruising across the lake or pulling up to the dock. You know how dogs are. They always want to stick their head out the window. Well now they can see through the gate. Isn't that kind of nice for pets? So moving on down the side, here's our side gate again with the doggy dock view. Our electric power bimini. Electric power biminis are standard on all barlettas. We don't have a manual bimini like everybody else does. They have the option of upgrading to a electric power bimini. Ours is standard. Now moving to the back of the pontoon, You'll see what I mean when I talk about the extra deck length that we have back here. This is a really nice area for boarding and debarking the boat, getting the tubes ready for the kids to go tubing, skis, life jackets, ropes. Um, there's just a plethora of reasons why we want this large swim platform. Uh, Skeeto Bar is standard on this boat. Most boat companies are going to offer a optional Skeeto bar. Ours is standard. Notice our gas fill. Our gas fill is centered in the pontoon so that way no matter what side of the fuel pump you pull up it's easy to access. And that's a 34 gallon gas tank in there. Now again we do not measure in the length of the transom. You'll see that the transom um, sticks out the back of the pontoon a little bit. One thing I want to point out <coughs> this is a 22 foot cabrio with 115 horse. 
Now, with Barletta, any time you order a pontoon with a 115 or larger, you're going to automatically get the option of hydraulic steering. Hydraulic steering is a hydraulic cylinder mounted on the front of the engine with two hoses going up to underneath the helm that are going to make it much, much easier to steer this pontoon. The reason that we do that is due to the right-hand rotation of the propeller. The right-hand rotation of the propeller creates right-hand steering torque. So if you had a boat before, and let's say you're driving across the lake, you're trimmed down, if you let go of the wheel, the boat wants to whip to the right. And it's very difficult to turn to the left. That's due to the right-hand steering torque created by the right-hand rotation of the propeller. So to eliminate that steering torque, we upgrade to hydraulic steering. Again, that's standard when you order a Barletta with a 115 or larger. Now, over here, we have our stainless steel boarding ladder. This is a telescopic ladder, so it swings out, swings down. Now, notice I mentioned stainless steel. A lot of pontoon companies come with aluminum ladders. Some pontoon companies come with ladders tucked underneath here. Boy, I don't like that. They're very difficult to retract and, and, and deploy. Um, I don't, you have to get down on your hands and knees, and I'm 66 years old, I don't always like doing that. This is much easier. But here's the thing I like. Uh, <laughs> we replace a lot of aluminum ladders for customers because, you know, they bang them into the dock, or for some reason they get all bent up, and they're not as strong, they get old and wore out and flimsy. Um, so yeah, we end up replacing a lot of aluminum ladders. This ladder, I'm here to tell you, this thing is so stout that you bang this into the dock and yeah, you're probably gonna bend the dock. Now the other thing I like about it is, notice the hinge point is right up towards the top. This way, there's, there, there's some ladders where the hinge point is way down here. Well, that means you gotta get down on your hands and knees again and reach way down here in order to lift the ladder up. With this type of ladder, you don't have to. You can grab hold right here, swing the ladder up, because it's telescopic, it'll slide right down. Works a little better when it's wet and then you can clip it in place. Pretty cool, huh? Down below is our, tr our uh, bracket that we mount our transducer for our depth finder. And when we get inside, I'll show you the standard depth finder that comes with this boat. Okay, another thing that's standard with the boat for 2023 is lifting strakes. You'll notice down here that rib with the three little holes in it, that thing runs all the way to the front of the pontoon. Not the nose cone, but just to the round part of the pontoon. Those are called lifting strakes. What lifting strakes do is they help lift the boat up on top of the water instead of plowing through the water. So we're gonna add a few miles an hour on our top speed because of those lifting strakes. We're gonna get a little better fuel economy because of those lifting strakes. Why? Because we're lifting the boat up on top of the water, creating less drag which creates better performance, better fuel economy. So that's standard on a 2023 Barletta Cabrio, two tube. Also standard on a three tube too, but that's another video for another day. So let's take a look at the inside. Okay, starting up in the bow of the pontoon. Again, this is a model called a 22 foot QC, quad lounge, co-pilot's chair. But you know, the funny thing is, is all the 22 Cabrio bow bench seats are the same, all right? Um, this, is, this bow bench seat is certainly big enough to f easily fit two adults, <coughs> excuse me, maybe two adults and a child. Nice size storage compartments underneath the bench seats, drains, vents, keep your stuff dry. Uh, pop down armrests, both the port and the starboard side have pop-down armrests on the cabrios. People love that. There's also two mobile cup holders. Now this one has its own little storage bracket, so that's a good place to keep it. You can put it in here. You can put it in here. There's another one that's standard. Okay. 
Now, underneath the seat, uh, down in the seat bases, is a USB jack. And that's the new style, I should look this up, I can't remember what it's called, a D, C, a C USB. And I believe that it's designed to help charge your phones faster. Okay, and there's a blue LED light in there. But really what I want to point out down here is that the fact that they finish off the vinyl on the seat boxes. A lot of companies, it's raw plastic down here. Doesn't look nearly as tr attractive as what the vinyl covered seat boxes are. And again, here's that doggy dock view gate. Now, one thing that Barletta touts is that they are rattle free. And yeah, if you t grab hold of their gates, they don't rattle. They got a foam pad here. They got a block down there. They got a full length piano hinge here. We just don't get rattles. Other brands of boats that we've sold over the years, we have had complaints that when a guy's driving across the lake that the gates rattle so loud that it drives them crazy. So we've had to deal with that issue. Okay. Moving back, this is the reason that we call it a, a C. This is the co-pilot's chair, all right? Now, a, a Q or a quad versus a QC. A quad, this bench seat would extend all the way up here. And you'd have a rear-facing chase lounge and a longer bench seat. Now, here's what we find. We find that the gals are coming in saying, look, I don't want to face backwards when we're moving that way. I don't want to only face my husband. I want to be able to swivel. I want to be able to recline. This is a reclining captain's chair. I want to be able to slide it back and forth. I want to be able to lift the armrests up and down. They want their own flexibility with their co-pilot's chair next to their husband or maybe the husband and the wife. Um, so that's why we stock the model called a QC quad lounge with the co-pilot's chair. Now next to the co-pilot's chair is what we call a caddy. Um, in the caddy there's a couple of cup holders, there's a cell phone holder, there's a USB jack, and there's a little storage net down there for keeping small articles. Okay and then just ahead of the co-pilot's chair is a table. You open up this door and there's two legs underneath there. I won't open both of them. But you pop that leg out, you extend it out a little bit, and you latch it, and now you've got a nice little table. Because of that being standard, you know, the cockpit table, the pedestal type of cockpit table that you see, we still sell a few of those, but not like we used to because that's now standard. So that's really nice to have. And then underneath this bench seat, excuse me, this Chase Lounge, is the trash can. In the trash can is the owner's manual that nobody ever reads. <laughs> right? I don't. My wife says, yeah, those are just suggestions. <laughs> now, getting back to the stern of the boat um, is the quad lounge. So we have two bench seats with forward-facing chase lounges up front and we have two bench seats with rear-facing chase lounges in the stern. Again, we have storage underneath the chase lounges. We have storage underneath the bench seats. I mentioned that we have an electric power bimini top and some of my other videos I show you how to operate that. Again, we have a USB jack down here for charging cell phones. We have another storage clip for the second movable cup holder if you choose to mount it there. Now, why do people choose this interior seating arrangement versus, say, our Ultra Lounge that I did a video on a couple days ago? Uh, they're both very, very popular. I think the Ultra Lounge is probably our most popular model that we sell. But here's what we find. Families with little tykes 
tend to go with this seating arrangement because of the stern full height gate. Now the children are totally enclosed in the pontoons. I know how kids are, I got two of them. They run from the front to the back, from the back to the front all day long, right? And parents feel a lot more comfortable when the kids are totally enclosed in the cockpit of the pontoon. Now, another feature about the quad lounge is sometimes when we go cruising, we'll bring a, two other couples along, and this becomes what we call a conversation pit. So I have maybe me and my wife here and my guests back here, and the beauty of this is, is I can hear everybody's conversation. We've had clients come in with different types of seating arrangements in their pontoons, and the guys would tell us, there are times when he's sitting here and others are sitting somewhere else and they're so far away that they can't hear the conversation that's going on and they end up feeling like a chauffeur sitting up back here all by themselves. They don't really like that. So the driver captain wants to be included in the conversation that's going on. So that's a nice feature of the quad lounge. And then of course we have our gate in the back that accesses our swim platform. Nice, easy transition from the cockpit of the pontoon to these big swim platforms. I just love these big swim platforms. Everybody is requiring that they have as large a swim platform as possible on the back of their pontoon today. They're so functional. So let's take a look at the helm. Okay, on the helm, uh, first thing is we have a cup holder up here. We have an interior light here. We have our dog dish pet food tray down here. That's always nice. We are pet friendly on our Barletta pontoons. Um, we have a beautiful looking dash. This is a brand new helm for 2023. And the first thing you'll notice about this is it is a elevated helm. It's elevated about four inches off the floor, which gets the captain up a little bit higher so that as we're docking the boat, say a dock coming up over here, and we have people sitting here. This way the captain can see over them a little bit better to help maneuver the boat towards the dock. So the elevated helm was very nice to have. We have a floor mat down there for non-slip. Looks very attractive. Now the biggest feature about the helm, in my opinion, is the leg room. Oh my gosh, there are so many, so many manufacturers out there that miss this. I want to be able to stretch out. I want to be able to uh, uh, lengthen my, my legs. Um, have you ever sat in an airplane where your, your legs are like this? My, my knees stiffen up. Man, that's like I need an oil can or something because my knees just get so sore when I can't stretch them out like this. So there are companies that have helms that they go straight down and give you zero leg room and you sit here all day and you just feel very uncomfortable. I want to be able to stretch my legs out like what you see there. Okay, now, five position tilt wheel, five different positions you can tilt, move that to. Um, this is our tachometer. This is a multi-function gauge. We have a little LCD screen here and we can toggle I don't have the key on right now. We could toggle to different um, information screens through that LCD. Over here we have our speedometer, right? Goes up to 70. <laughs> Good luck, yeah, that never happens. You know, this boat with a 115, yeah, it's a high 20, 30 mile an hour pontoon. Now, the beauty of the speedometer is it's a GPS driven speedometer, not the old pedo style speedometers that we've had in boats for many, many years. We have our trim and tilt gauge. We have our fuel gauge. All right, important information to have. This is our hydraulic uh, uh, reservoir for the hydraulic steering. You'll never need to go in there. We just don't have issues with that hydraulic steering system. Standard is a Lowrance Hook 5 color fish finder, depth finder, slash GPS. So it's a very, very nice depth finder. It's a five inch screen. And it does have the little 
uh, trap door over on the side there. So if you have the uh, lake chip maps, you can plug that in. This comes standard with 3,000 lakes across the United States. But if you want to get more intricate, you can plug your Minnesota lake chip map in there and get every single lake and a lot more information on the lake chip maps than what this offers. So, a lot of boat companies have a depth finder is optional. This is standard. Um, below that is our Hertz sound system. This is an Italian made uh, stereo system. Now, in this particular boat, the Hertz is it's not real high, it's, it's pretty darn good, but it's not the high fidelity sound system that the Luso comes with, you know, that has that uh, subwoofer and amplifier. That's a really high test sound system in the uh, Luso models. This is pretty darn good for a mid grade pontoon. That's a decent sounding uh, stereo system. It is Bluetooth, of course, AM, FM, Bluetooth. So if you want to plug your phone in, there's a jack right down here that is wired to the stereo so you can listen to the music that you have on your phone. And right below the stereo is a cordless cell phone charger. You can just set your phone right on there and it'll charge it. And there's a little water drain in case it rains. Okay. So, of course, we have our switches, our docking lights, our interior lights, our navigation lights, accessory, 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 and our horn. All right. Uh, when you get a Mercury, you get a Mercury control box. Below that is our ignition switch. Below, next to that is our up and down switch for our electric bimini. You can raise and lower your electric bimini just by touching that switch. Here we have our safety lanyard. And below that is a 12-volt power outlet. So you can plug in, say, um, your handheld spotlight, 12-volt blender. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah, 12-volt blender. That's a great idea. <laughs> and below that is a cup holder. And then our fire extinguisher is mounted below that. It is a Coast Guard requirement that anything that has a built-in tank, you must have a fire extinguisher on board. So Barletta supplies the fire extinguisher standard on this boat. Captain's chair swivels, slides back and forth, armrests pop up and down, reclines just like the co-pilot's chair. Okay, <clears throat> one of the things I want to talk about is the quality upholstery of the vinyl in this pontoon. You know, if you came into Family Marine and you worked here for about a month or so and you saw some of the service pontoons or trade-ins or whatever, coming in, you'll find out that one of the biggest issues that we have with pontoons is the ultraviolet light from the sun deteriorating the upholstery in a pontoon and the upholstery tends to crack and tear and the stitching comes out and it's just, a, a, it's not a good thing. Um, in the past we've taken in pontoons on trade that have ripped and torn upholstery. Boy, let me tell you, it is difficult at best to sell those. People do not want to see cracked and torn upholstery in a pontoon. So, the vinyl that Barletta uses in this pontoon has a high content of ultraviolet light inhibitor, right? It reflects the ultraviolet light from the sun. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little anal. Um, I like to go and, and add a, another protection, another layer of UV inhibitor to this upholstery. I do it once a year, usually in the spring. I have a product up front which is by Boat Bling, it's called Vinyl Sauce, and that has a very high content of UV inhibitor, and it also helps keep the vinyl soft and supple. And what I find is it helps clean up the vinyl much easier. But my most important thing is I want to protect it from the ultraviolet light from the sun. I use it at home. My vinyl lawn furniture, I got my garden tractors, I put it on my rubber tires on my seat to prevent it from uh, deteriorating due to the sunlight. I got an old farm all tractor from in 1940s that I use it on the tires because of those big honking tires are really expensive and I want to, that thing sits outside all winter, all summer, all year long and I want to protect those tires from dry rot. So I spray down those tires once a year with this uh, Boat Bling Vinyl Sauce. It really works well. Uh, but don't put it on your floor, because this is a seagrass flooring, which is made of a PVC. PVC is not porous. Vinyl is porous. It will not soak into the flooring. It'll make it slippery. And yeah, you won't like that. So um, 
If you'd like any more information on the Barletta Cabrio 22 QC, uh, feel free to give me a call. Corey, he's behind the camera. Um, our phone number is area code 320-222-BOAT. That's 222-2628. Um, you can see us on the web at www.familymarineboats.com. More importantly, go to YouTube and search for Family Marine Wilmer, W-I-L-L-M-A-R, and you'll see our icon. Click on that icon, and there's, oh my gosh, around 100 or so videos on there that we're, we produce to help you decide which is the best pontoon, the best interior design, the best horsepower, the best trailer, whether they want sea legs or not, that suits your needs the best. We're here to help you decide. We're here to help you get into the boating lifestyle and enjoy this uh, uh, extracurricular activity to the fullest extent. That's what we're here to do is to help you guys uh, do this. So um, we appreciate you watching and uh, thanks for the time. So if, again, if you have any more questions, please give us a call.